Hello everyone and welcome to a short look at our half year results for 2020. It's been a challenging start to a new decade and I'm sure it's been challenging for everyone. I'll provide you with an operational overview, particularly looking at the impact of COVID-19, then Stephen Pearce, our Finance Director, will cover the numbers. I'll then come back and reflect on our broader company progress. So first, safety. For us, safety is, and should always be, front of mind. No company can claim to be sustainable if it is not doing its utmost to safeguard and enhance the well-being of those that work within the business. While statistics may tell one story, I am acutely aware that serious and potentially life-threatening incidents continue in our business, and none more alarming than at our Australian Grosvenor Underground Mine in May this year. Thankfully, all five of our colleagues injured in that incident are on the road to recovery. We continue to investigate the incident and we will resume operations only when it is safe and when we have the controls in place to check what new issues need to be considered in the operations. If we review the global picture in terms of injuries, the total recordable case frequency rate for the first half of 2020 has been the lowest on record for us, building on the record performance for 2019. I'm also pleased to share that we have been fatality free at our managed operations for the first half of 2020. The last few months have tested society to its limits with the outbreak of COVID-19. And I'm proud to reflect on how our people have pulled together to do what's right for each other, our business, and for broader society. We acted quickly at the start of the pandemic to protect the health of both our people and host communities through our global We Care Lives and Livelihoods program, which covers the communities and regions across our operational areas of activity and influence. The We Care framework addresses key issues across four pillars, being physical health, mental health, living with dignity, which is our support to combat gender-based and domestic violence, and community response. For many of our communities, we provide a wide range of essential services, including water, health facilities, education, power, infrastructure, and employment. The role we play is key, and it is very much part of the way we do business. This social contribution is at the heart of our purpose as a company, to reimagine mining to improve people's lives. And we continue to provide this support as the effects of the pandemic evolve. We have also ensured the continuity and integrity of our operations. Anglo-American is a resilient and agile business, transformed in recent years, and that transformation has enabled our proactive and dynamic response to the pandemic. In the first half, COVID-19 restrictions across Southern Africa significantly impacted PGMs, Kumba Iron Ore, De Beers and thermal coal production. Our metallurgical coal operations in Australia were also affected by two incidents. In January, a fall of ground at Murrumbah delayed the completion of a long wall move and, at Grosvenor, operations have been suspended since early May following a gas ignition incident underground. And refined production at PGMs in South Africa was impacted by the need for repairs to the converter. The plant has since ramped up and is operating at full capacity. The net effect is that production output was down 11% on the first half of the year. This performance was credible given the fact we lost 20% of our working time through the lockdown. Under the circumstances, I'm very proud of the performance that was achieved. Further good news is that we built back up from a production level of around 60% of total capacity in April to around 90% of production capacity by the end of June. In both Brazil and Chile, Great performances through the first half have also helped us in that recovery. Now, I'll hand over to Stephen to talk us through what all that means for the financials 
And again, what I must say has been a commendable performance under the circumstances. As Mark said, the business has shown its resilience through a volatile start to the year. Our strong balance sheet has served us well and we were pleased to see the reform of South African exchange control restrictions announced earlier this year. We've managed our costs tightly during the first half and we've been able to exercise flexibility in capex, protecting our cash flows where needed. But importantly, we've done all of this sustainably and without compromising our value-led growth projects. For example, we still expect first production at our world-class Cayoveco copper project in Peru in 2022. This is despite the prolonged slowdown through the national COVID-19 quarantine, reflecting the excellent progress achieved by the team prior to March. Looking at the numbers, we were always going to be variable across the different business units, but are robust considering the extreme circumstances. Net debt increased to $7.6 billion due to investment in growth projects and a temporary $1.4 billion working capital buildup, mainly at De Beers and PGMs. We delivered EBITDA of $3.4 billion, despite an 11% impact on production. This reflects the significant transformation of our underlying operating capabilities. The net cost and volume impact of operational disruptions due to COVID-19, including the impact of reduced diamond demand, decreased our underlying EBITDA by $1.1 billion. The diamond market in particular is being significantly impacted by the pandemic, affecting all stages of the diamond value chain and resulting in a 45% decrease in rough diamond sales volumes in the period. Underlying earnings came in at 72 cents per share, driving a 28 cent dividend based on our 40% payout dividend policy. In total, we have returned $5 billion to shareholders since 2017. Unit costs improved by 4% with some help from foreign exchange rates, but that is with lower production volumes, so a strong performance at an important time. Our capital expenditure increased to $1.8 billion due to investment in growth projects such as Cayoveco in Peru and the Woodsmith Polyhalide project in the UK that we acquired earlier this year. An eventful first half to say the least, but we are well placed for both the second half and the longer term, with a strong balance sheet and our disciplined allocation of capital directed towards the integrity of our existing assets our attractive growth profile and cash returns to shareholders. It feels strange to be talking about the long term during these times of uncertainty, but beyond the current business imperatives, we continue to ensure that our business is well positioned. Kayaveco is a key asset for our future and prior to March, project development was well ahead of schedule with all key milestones achieved during the first quarter of 2020. The project has been slowed down during Peru's national quarantine since 15th of March. During this time, the focus has been on the safety of our workforce and the local community, as well as on developing a safe restart plan while optimising development and mine plans for the future. From the beginning of July, Activities started up on site and are expected to ramp up over a three month period. The net effect is that we still expect to start up in 2022, which is an enormous achievement by the team. The trajectory of our portfolio is towards later cycle products with the development of our recently acquired tier one Woodsmith polyhalite fertilizer project in the UK continuing to progress well. In a similar vein, and building on our already significant reduction in thermal coal, we also set out our plans to work towards an exit from our remaining South African thermal coal operations. Looking further out, the ongoing transformation of mining through our Future Smart Mining Program has enabled us to map a pathway to achieving carbon neutrality across our operations by 2040 and eight sites by 2030 an ambitious and important commitment for us as a business, for our employees 
and all of our diverse stakeholders. Whether it's using solar energy to produce green hydrogen to power our haul trucks and our operations, or technologies to dramatically reduce the energy and water we use to extract the metals and minerals we all need every day, we are changing the future footprint of mining for the better. Looking at the second half of this year, our focus on the health and well-being of our employees and community members will continue unabated. Amid the uncertainties of the pandemic, I expect our product diversification and our operating model, consistent with our transformation work, will continue to serve us well. As the global economy recovers, PGMs, copper and iron ore are all well placed. While De Beers, as the world's leading diamond business, is taking all the appropriate steps to address the effects of acute disruption. Staying true to our purpose, we are continuing to invest and grow our business responsibly, with our products increasingly geared towards a fast-growing population and a cleaner, greener, more sustainable world. Thank you. Thank you.